G'day there and welcome back to my low maintenance hydroponic vegetable garden. In today's video I'm going to run through a quick update and we have our first tomatoes ripening down here to my right. So I'm going to focus on the tomatoes. I've had a lot of questions about how I train them up these strings. Also they're not all growing beautifully so I'll, so I'll take you through the problems I'm having and show you what's working well. But of course in my last video I did a detailed run through of how I set all of this up. So if you'd like to know how you could set something similar up go back and have a look at my last video. So let's get started. So I'm mostly growing these two varieties of tomato, the seeds I just bought at Bunnings. This one is apparently called a Costaluto Fiorento and these are the Rouge de Mamande. Excuse me if I haven't pronounced that correctly. I also put in this one black Russian, but it's the only one in the garden. Now you can definitely tell the difference between the two varieties. This shorter one on the left is the Rouge de Mamande. And these two taller ones on the right are the Costaluto Florentino. I think I said it right that time. Obviously these on the right are much taller than this one on the left, but I have to say the fruit on the shorter Rouge de Mamans seems to be a lot healthier and there's more of it than there are on the Costaluto Florentinos. All of the Rouge de Mamans are carrying ample fruit set. The Costaluto Florentinos on the other hand seem to be growing plenty of fruit but it's all a lot smaller and I'm having a lot more problems with the fruit that is growing. For example, these ones, which were some of the earlier ones to start developing, have got this kind of scarring. It almost looks like blossom end rot, but it's a bit different to blossom end rot I've seen before. And some of them are showing signs of this kind of blackening. It doesn't quite look like blossom end rot. It's not on the ends. Maybe it's a similar kind of nutrient deficiency that's causing it. They're not all bad. Some of them still look quite healthy but I suspect the yield from the Rouge de Mamande is going to be a lot better than the yield from the Costaluto Florentinos. Now I do want to talk about Blossom End Rot because I have had some of it. And here's an example of where I've got some Blossom End Rot. I'm just actually going to take that off the vine. And that looks like pretty classic Blossom End Rot to me. Now the Black Russian Tomato doesn't seem to have had any problems with the Blossom End Rot or scarring. Although this one here looks a bit munted, but it just doesn't have as much fruit on it as the other varieties. But we'll continue to monitor that and we do have new flowers coming through, so there's still yet time for it to grow a lot more tomatoes. Now there are a few things that cause blossom end rot, but primarily it's caused by a calcium deficiency. Now in hydroponic systems, we shouldn't have problems with calcium deficiencies because we control the amount of nutrients that get to the plants. But certain environmental factors can impede the plant's ability to take up the calcium. And certainly in my case where we've had unseasonable amounts of rain, which may have diluted my nutrients solution a little bit because rainwater falls on top of my tank and then runs into the middle so my nutrient solution can get diluted if we have a lot of rain. So there's a couple of possibilities here. One is the plants weren't getting enough calcium because the rainwater diluted my nutrient solution and the other is the high humidity and excessive rainfall meaning that there's been a lot of moisture in the air and it may have impeded the plant's ability to take up the calcium. I've also had a few cases where pests have attacked the fruit and put these dirty great holes in the top. This one's still home, so let's see if we can extract him out of there. Look at that caterpillar, he's grown fat on the proceeds of my garden. I'm not exactly sure what kind of caterpillar that is, but I suspect it might be one of those white cabbage moths that we get a lot of around here. Anyway, fortunately not too many of the fruit have been affected like that. So, so far so good. And if you know what's causing this kind of scarring and blackening on some of the tomatoes, please shoot me a comment and let me know. Fortunately though, the problems haven't been too widespread and it looks like we're getting a good crop of tomatoes coming through with these first ones starting to ripen. And I'll be tracking the yield, so I'll let you know how much we produce at the end of the season. Now, one question I've been getting is about how I train my tomatoes up these strings. So let me take you through that now. It's pretty straightforward. I set up these strings which are supported at the top and anchored at the bottom. I just have them screwed into the pine battens that run down the side of my channels. Now the strings shouldn't be too tight because you need enough slack to wind them around the plant as the plant grows. And you can see how this just winds up around that main stem all the way up. And that just supports the plant as it grows so it can grow quite tall without flopping over. And that slack in the string just means as the plant grows, it still has room to sway in the wind, but it can only move so much because it's anchored at the top 
and at the bottom, which fundamentally sets the limit as to how far it can move when it's really windy. Now, one of my tomatoes died and I put this new seedling in just over three weeks ago. Initially, I had it staked into this stake, but now it's too big for that. So I set up the string and strung it up a couple of days ago but it's growing quite quickly, so it needs another couple of wraps. But before I do that, this tomato needs a prune so we can get one single stalk growing all the way up the string. See how we have this branch here, and that's branching off into two main stalks. We don't want that. So when I'm deciding which stalk I'm gonna keep, I usually look for the stronger one with more flowers on it. Now, this one here has these flowers here. This one doesn't really have any flowers coming through yet. And if we look, this one's also got more flowers growing up at the tip. So I'm gonna remove this one. So with a pair of clean secateurs, we'll just take that off there. And now I'm just going to work the plant around the string and get a couple more wraps just around the stalk like, like that. So that should be good for a few more days. And as it grows, I'll just keep wrapping it around like that at the top. Now this plant also needs a bit of other attention. You'll notice that at a lot of the nodes where the leaf shoots out from the side of the main stem, you get these shoots that shoot up out of the corner. There's another one down here, and that leaf is looking a bit dead and ratty, but that looks like it's gonna grow up into another main stalk. And if we let it, that one will also grow up into another main stalk. So we wanna pull those out. If they're small enough, you can kind of just pinch them off carefully like that. There's another one there. Now when we have ratty leaves that look like they're damaged growing towards the bottom, we, I just take those off. So with this bottom one, we'll take that whole leaf off as well as the shoot that's coming out of the, the corner. You might take this one off as well. So what we're left with is one main stalk. Oh, we've got one little shoot coming out of the corner there. We'll just pull that out. You can get them early and then you'll just get a strong main stalk growing up the string. Now here's one of the bigger ones and here's a, a shoot that's obviously not going anywhere good so we'll pluck that out. And that's how I'm managing the tomatoes. I just pinch out those side shoots and trim the ratty leaves down at the bottom. And whilst everything is not going perfectly, everything's going pretty well. So I don't see any need to change what I'm doing at this stage. I'm doing some of these cucumbers exactly the same way and they seem to be going fine and we're getting plenty of cucumbers. Of course the cucumbers along the back fence are growing up through these wires, which I've just attached along the back fence, and they're actually doing a lot better. But I think that's more about hours of sunlight than how they're being trained. I think both ways are fine. Now let's do a quick run through of how everything else in the garden is going. I mentioned earlier that the cucumbers are going gangbusters and we are regularly harvesting multiple cucumbers a day from these vines. We've already picked heaps and I didn't start tracking the yield until just the other day but I'll be tracking that going forward as well. I've got no complaints about the progress of the habaneros and the jalapenos. The habaneros were put in a bit later than everything else, but this one has started to develop some fruit. It's in there somewhere. All the rest have plenty of flowers, but the others don't seem to have developed any fruit yet. All the jalapenos have got loads of fruit coming through. Some of them look like they're getting close to ready. And the capsicums have also started developing fruit. This eggplant's looking very healthy and it started developing flowers ages ago, but those flowers have really come out now, not showing signs of any fruit yet. Now these chilies that used to be in my garage NFT system are going crazy. These two on the end, which were stronger and healthier when I transplanted them, um, are just getting massive to the point where this one is now overshadowing this bag of ginger below it, but I'm not too worried about that. These two that were cut back a bit harder and not so healthy when they were transplanted, they seem to be coming through quite strongly now. There seems to be good fruit developing on all of them. So I would say that was a successful transplant from the NFT system into this potted media setup. Now the ginger's still looking a bit ratty, but it seems to be growing quite well. The biggest takeout from this is the bag, which I planted the bigger chunks of ginger root in, seems to be growing a lot more strongly and be more healthy than what's in the bags, which were planted using much smaller chunks of ginger. They started growing first, but they're nowhere near as strong as these ones, which were planted about four weeks later. The galangal's still battling, but it's really struggling to make any headway. So the jury's still out on the success of this experiment. Now, of course, with the ginger and galangal, that'll just continue to grow all season. And we only harvest the roots when the greenery starts to die back 
at the start of winter usually, so sometime around July, August. So it'll be quite a while yet before we know if this cold climate ginger experiment is gonna be successful as well. And that about wraps it up for this update. Remember, if you're interested in how I put all of this together, or if you're thinking about putting something like this together yourself, go back and have a look at my last video. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you wanna keep up to date with how the garden progresses. Thanks for watching, hydroponics. So this is me about to harvest the first tomatoes ever from my new garden. Ideally, I'd like to let them ripen further on the vine, but I have to go away for a few days and I don't want them to over ripen or get savaged by pests while I'm away. So I'm just gonna take them now. Ah, I can't do this one handed. I'm gonna put the camera down. I've left some of the less ripe ones on the vines. I think they'll be good for a few days until I get back. And the weigh in for my first two tomatoes. 257 grams.